Hello, and welcome to Module 5 of the Linux Board Porting Online Series. This is our first lab exercise, and in this module, I'll be showing you how to set up and install Code Composer Studio. There are two key elements to installing Code Composer Studio. The first is to make sure that the proper JTAG drivers are installed. Secondly, you will need to make sure that the registration is up to date, as this is a prerequisite of using JTAG with Code Composer Studio. Here we have a uh, basic Ubuntu 12.04 installation. And the first thing we're going to need to do in order to set up a Code Composer Studio debug session is to install Code Composer Studio. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is open up a terminal. You can either go from Applications, Accessories, and select Terminal, or you can press Control, Alt, and T as in Terminal. Either one will do that. Uh, I've already copied the install files for CCS into the home directory. Now, if we just take a quick look at the CCS install shell script, you can see that it takes a single argument, which is what the $1 is here, and it expects us to tell it where the CCS install files are in terms of a directory. Now, the other thing that's important is when I call the CCS install script, I need to be sure to use root permissions. So in Ubuntu, that's generally just using the sudo command. So I can say sudo CCS install and then home user, which is the location of the CCS install files. We do that and it'll bring up uh, this, accept the license agreement. We're just going to use the, the default install folder. Uh, here, the defaults are support for the Cortex-A and ARM9, which is what I want. Uh, you could put in compiler tools. We're going to use the SDK compiler tools. Uh, we're not going to be using DSP BIOS or any of the simulators, so I'll skip that. Uh, but this is important. This is the JTAG support. I'm going to be using a Spectrum Digital XDS 560, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just put in support for all JTAG. You know, if you're using a Blackhawk, then of course you would select the Blackhawk. Um, obviously, just whatever emulator you use, you need to have the support installed. Uh, go through the next, and then I'll pause the recording so you don't have to watch the entire process. Once the install completes, you'll get the finish screen here, um, and you can just press finish. I'm not sure why the setup script uh, hasn't exited here, but I'll just minimize the terminal. And you can see that we have um, config utilities for the Blackhawk and Spectrum Digital XDS 560, um, as well as Code Composer Studio, all of these icons set up on our desktop. Now that Code Composer Studio is installed, let's go ahead and launch. I'm going to take the default workspace, go ahead and let Code Composer boot up. Uh, now the first time you open a new workspace, you'll get this Welcome to Code Composer Studio screen. I'm just going to exit out of that. If you look down here in the corner, you'll see Unlicensed. Uh, this is a good thing to go ahead and show. If I do Help and Code Composer Studio licensing information, I can go to Upgrade and Launch the License Setup. Again, I'm just going to use Evaluate, so um, that'll be good for 90 days. Finish, and it tells me that it's going to launch the browser, Firefox, uh, in order to take me to where I can register. Obviously, you need to go through the account setup. So log in here to your uh, MyTI account or set up a new one. And now once you've logged in, um, it'll take you to this page. Uh, you obviously want to read through the terms and conditions for the free evaluation license. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, you can select I agree. And it'll go to this page. Uh, it indicates that you're basically asking for a 90-day free evaluation. 
uh, CCS um, has filled this in actually um, so this is automatically populated the activation ID next it's going to ask you for the MAC address media access controller address of your computer uh, this is because the license will actually tie itself to a given computer by the MAC address uh, in this case what we need to do is run the ifconfig utility so I can just say ifconfig on eth0 and here where it says hardware address uh, this hex number right here is the MAC address of this computer so I'll do control shift and C bring it up and then control V to paste that MAC address into this location uh, you notice here that it wants periods whereas what I have is colons um, let's go ahead and change those out not sure if it would work with the colons or not uh, both are fairly standard but uh, as you can see here it, it tells you the format with period separation uh, so now that we've put that in we can scroll down the other two are optional and we go to next And you can see that it's sending a license file to, uh, to my registered email address. So um, this is a valid email address, and I will tell it to email the license. So um, that's everything. Then obviously we need to check into the email. Here you can see the email that I've gotten from TI and right here is the license file um, that's attached. So uh, all you need to do is of course copy the license file, um, copy it to any location on your host computer and then in a moment I'll show you how to, uh, how to point CCS to where the license file is located. So. You know, you can just right click, copy, save it anywhere on your computer. Here you can see that we've done that. Um, so now the license file is in our home directory, which is home user. I'll go back to CCS, do the help licensing information. Um, go to manage and here um, I'll just use the the file and so I do add specify a license file um, and it's under home user and TMDF CCS license so here we say okay and we see that it shows up. I select it by just checkboxing here and now uh, you can see that we are updated to where it says licensed down here um, instead of unlicensed this will allow us to use the the emulators. This concludes module 5 of the Linux board porting online series. Module 5 is the first in a series of three lab exercises the third of which we will be actually debugging U-Boot from source code using JTAG. In Module 6, which is the second of this series, I will be showing you how to rebuild U-Boot inside of Code Composer Studio.